I mean, Morning. this is remarkable in the sense that whether you're a football fan or not, he still had a role to play in sort of all of our lives somehow. Yes, absolutely. I think that um, particularly as a, as a person, not, I mean, everybody knew him as a footballer, how great a footballer he was, just what he contributed to, to Manchester United and England. But I think when you got to know him, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't get to know him, know him, as it were. But every time I went to Old Trafford, see Sir Alex Ferguson in the boardroom, you would bump into uh, Sir Bobby and have a chat away with him and, and so on and so forth. So he was a great ambassador for Manchester United and a great ambassador for football and England and such and such a kind person. I think that's what everybody as tribute is, is, is explaining to what a great, great guy he was, what a contribution he made to, to football for England and for, for Manchester United. And of course, as a youngster, I watched him in the World Cup final on my black and white TV at the time all those years ago. But it, it was a pleasure to, to know him every time I went to Old Trafford. He'd stop and have a chat with you. He'd come over and see and say, how are you doing, Sam? What, what's happening in your career? So, uh, yeah, just a great guy. Yeah, I mean, I, he was a midfielder, wasn't he? And that's why he was so particularly chosen for the team. But my goodness, he could score some incredible goals. Yes, absolutely. I think that uh, uh, he was he was unique in the fact that he could score from, well, what seemed to be a, almost most of his goals from outside the box. And he used to go on these long runs, beating one or two people, and then he'd fire it in with a left or right foot, of course, and... You know, obviously, famously scoring in the World Cup, and then for Manchester United scoring in the in the Champions League final. But he, he, like I said, his contribution uh, f for Manchester United in England and for football, of course, was uh, was outstanding. And then, of course, as an ambassador for Manchester United and a director, he could travel across the world because everybody knew Sir Bobby Charlton. Oh, yeah, I, w I wonder if he had a bigger impact uh, in that role on the board than perhaps we realise. Because you look back at, at people like you know, Sir Alex and the start of his managerial career, which was not you know, <laughs> covered in glory. <laughs> if, if it wasn't for, for Bobby on the board, could there have been a different future for Man United? It's, it, it's hard to say, but I mean, it, Sir Alex and, and Sir Bobby got on famously, like you mean... Uh, as he did with, his, with Sir Matt Busby. And I think that uh, in those difficult times for Sir Alex, perhaps the backing of, of Sir Bobby in the boardroom was needed and perhaps he gave that. But obviously, I don't know. But he was certainly a man that he, who saw the quality of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, that's for sure. And they had a great friendship as well. Yeah, I mean, and you can also say, and a lot of the writers about him are today are saying he had true northern grit. Um, he came from a footballing family, yes, but they were also a mining family. Um, and he'd also seen, sadly, his share of tragedy because uh, he was part of the terrible air crash at uh, Munich. Yes, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, what you, what you think of that team might have done that it survived. I mean, that, that was one of the things that... Uh, you think about, I mean, the quality of player uh, who comes to mind, particularly for me, would be Duncan Edwards, who came from the same area as me in Dudley, like you mean. But, I mean, that, I mean to actually survive that tragedy and then uh, Sir Matt Busby rebuilding the, the, the Busby's, uh, t the Busby babes yet again to be as good as they were, was uh, was quite outstanding. I mean, uh, but yes, a tragic loss. Um, obviously, at that particular time, when you've seen the documentaries, they were telling or saying that the plane shouldn't have really tried to take off, but they needed to get back. But, you know, luckily for football and for his family and for Manchester United, Sir Bobby survived and for England, of course. Uh, are we really coming to the end of an era? Um, I, I, look, I mean, obviously, Sir, Sir, Jeff, Sir Jeff Hurst is still with us and hopefully will be for a good long while yet. But it... I mean, what they went through, what they achieved in 66 and a time when we only had, you know, two or three channels on the telly and all the rest of it, it, it yeah. united the country in a way that we sort of don't get now. Well, certainly the, the millions and millions of people that would, would be watching and following that, that particular game, you know, would be, would be unbelievable to think about how many millions, not just in this country, but across the world, like you mean. And, of course, uh, having so so few channels at the time, everybody would be ready and waiting hours and hours before the kick-off to watch what you, 
watch a fabulous game. And of course, you'd see a lot of people that would tell you that they didn't like football. But in this particular case, they would actually get ready to watch it. It was an occasion for everybody in England to sit around their, sit around their settee, sit around their television and watch this great event. And what a great event it was, how it unfolded, you know. The last minute goal by Germany, then the extra time, and then we think it's all over, and it is now Sir Jeff Satrick. So, uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to win it again no. since, which makes it even more important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible times. Uh, it's lovely to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. It's, it's a perfect yes. way of talking to you to pay tribute Only to a great gentleman. Only Sir Bobby would have got me up at this time on a Sunday, by the way.